Cubic isn't even a blockchain. It's the only cryptocurrency fast enough to host a full-blown sentient AI. There is nothing like it out there. Huge potential. In this video, I'll tell you all about Cubic TickChain. Hello everyone, I'm RetroDrive. Please follow me on X to learn more about Cubic and to get most recent updates on the project. The goal of my videos and of my social media is to explain the most complex concepts in Cubic in simple terms. Cubic project consists of three parts, AI, mining, and tick chain. Today I will cover the Cubic's tick chain and explain some of the key mechanisms driving this unique piece of software. Traditional blockchains normally consist of blocks, which are cryptographically tied to each other to form a continuous ledger of transactions. Those systems are always cumbersome and slow. It is for that reason they have not replaced centralized databases within the corporate world or failed to be used as a widespread method of payment. The real adoption is missing because the technology is flawed. Cubic has introduced a completely new approach to how a decentralized system can function without trade-offs and have true instant finality. One that can have faster speeds than conventional databases and host complex systems in a trustless manner. That is something no financial or corporate institution can do. Cubic features a completely unique architecture, never even closely attempted in the world of blockchain or its derivatives. Thus, their motto is forget what you know about the distributed systems. So let me shed some light on Cubic tick chain. In Cubic, there are no blocks filled with transactions. There are ticks. Each tick gets filled with a maximum of 1024 transactions. Ticks post constantly, within a time set by the protocol. As of today, Cubic ticks once every four seconds. It is important to note that the tick chain is currently running in its first gear, so to speak, because this is what is currently required. As requirements and chain use go up, it can be accelerated to post up to five ticks per second. The system allows for many advantages. First is instant finality. Sending crypto to an exchange is a great example here. I am certain you've been in a situation when you had to wait for a certain number of confirmations before your deposit posted onto your account. What's happening there is they were waiting for your transaction to finalize. For Bitcoin, it takes up to two hours to finalize a transaction. For Ethereum, it takes up to 10 minutes till full confirmation. Waiting for a transaction to finalize guarantees against the possible blockchain reorg and having your funds lost. For comparison, Cubix transactions can finalize at sub-second speeds. Second big advantage is free transfers. It is free to send Cubic coins between wallets, opening up the possibility of microtransaction economy. Remember the 2021 Ethereum and Bitcoin fees? You really had to be there to know the pain of paying $200 per transaction. Third advantage is Cubic's incredible speed. Because up to five ticks can happen within one second, and multiple transactions can be combined into smart contract wrappers, the system has previously tested at 55 million transfers per second. There was also an independent physical test performed at 20 million transactions per second with the systems running at the stable rate. The creator of the chain claims that Cubic's smart contract engine is more performant than the engine of all cryptocurrencies combined. The tick chain is built specifically for AI and IoT use and it is designed to avoid keeping all the details of each transaction on chain, unlike other blockchains. Because of instant finality and lightweight node requirement, Cubic tick chain also does not need to verify each past transaction to its genesis block, like Bitcoin or Ethereum do. Instead, the chain activity is divided into epochs. Each epoch lasts one week, and every Wednesday, a new epoch starts. This makes the tick chain very lightweight and unencumbered. There are logging nodes and archival nodes which keep the full record of the details of the past events, but the chain itself does not. Let's look closer at this process. All the transactions from the previous epoch are pruned with the use of Merkle trees, and only the summary of wallet balances is left after this process. This ensures that all the previous epochs have been verified, and the previous wallet balance history is true, although it cannot be tracked back on chain. After this process, the new epoch starts. So how has Cubic solved the issues of lag, latency, and propagation? Instead of running everything on Linux servers, 
they have built their software to run directly on the hardware of the TickChain validators. Let me explain. Normally, blockchain nodes run as an application on top of Linux or Windows. Nodes manage memory, store large amounts of data, and confirm transactions. Not only nodes are resource intensive on their own, but they also run on top of even heavier operating system bloatware. This creates a long road with many turns for any message to reach its destination. Furthermore, all the security vulnerabilities of the extra underlying software are added to the system. The Cubic software suite is programmed in C++ and it runs without an operating system. It is more correct to say that Cubic is its own operating system running out of microchips, specifically the ultra-fast random access memory, RAM. This is why it can reach speeds other blockchains can't possibly dream of. This design calls for Cubic to operate as one single piece of software. To support such speeds, every native or third-party smart contract must be integrated directly into Cubic software suite and run as one entity out of RAM. There are some huge advantages to such design in speed and security, but there are also some minor trade-offs, which I will touch on later in the video. Smart contracts on Cubic. Everything in Cubic is designed to run its native AI product, AIGarth. As a part of AIGarth design, the system must evolve and hold itself accountable using smart contracts. This means that the network should be extremely reliable and the smart contract execution must occur with sub-second speeds. Cubic removes known limitations of other smart contract chains by designing an execution environment at the machine code level. Smart contracts in Cubic use C++ language and get compiled directly into the native code, the Cubic core. Being free from virtual machines and third-party operating systems, Cubic achieves higher execution speeds, reduced computational overhead, and increased efficiency. Because Cubic Core runs from the RAM of the computers, the question about limitations come up. Can Cubic scale if it becomes popular? This is how it scales. The current minimum requirement to be a computer is to have two terabytes of RAM. Even with this amount of memory, Cubic can host 1024 smart contracts on chain. When there is need for more, higher RAM requirement can be added. This creates additional advantages. Any smart contract on Cubic must be voted in to get integrated into the source code by the governance quorum. That means each project will go through an extensive validation process, including a physical audit by one of the Cubic core developers. This guarantees security other blockchains cannot provide. This clever engineering, speed, and robustness of the network will attract some serious players to use Cubic as the chain of choice for their products. It will also prevent any grifters running scams. However, it removes the freedom of any unknown person deploying any smart contract on chain in minutes, something Ethereum and Solana are famous for. Another topic to discuss about smart contracts is the economy of smart contract shares. Every smart contract on Cubic is divided into 676 shares. Every time a smart contract is deployed on Cubic tick chain, the system runs an IPO a Dutch auction for the sale of those shares. Any user can acquire shares because many projects on Cubic redistribute earned coins to its shareholders as dividends. I encourage you to research Cubic Capital. Shares are not cheap, but with Cubic Capital, you can own fractional shares of various smart contracts. But I digress. Now let's talk about governance and mining. In a system this fast, consensus must have a unique design and it truly does. It's called the Quorum Consensus. The Quorum consists of 676 validators called computers, with an O. They run powerful spec servers, typically hosted at data centers. Each of them hosts Cubic software and runs all tick chain operations from their RAM. This is what's technically happening to create each tick. Every tick has its own computer leader, a validator who proposes this new tick. Each tick in the chain is a round of consensus, where a minimum of 451 computers must sync up and agree on a tick for it to be valid. It's important to address how computers manage themselves within the Cubic Forum. It is done by a set of rules encoded into the protocol. The number of rewards differs between the computers which perform well and those that perform poorly. The underperforming computers get less coin rewards to motivate them to do better. 
The protocol constantly monitors the health of the quorum, and the bottom performers get replaced with better peers. This happens at the end of every epoch. There's also an entity named Arbitrator. It is there to catch any attacks on the network. The list of 676 computers is broadcast by the Arbitrator, and this allows all nodes to verify that the proper computer signed the specific tick. This list is verified against the same stats tracked by the quorum, and it creates the system where both the quorum and the arbitrator keep checks on each other. The arbitrator tracks whether all the computers are running the same software and that they are participating in the consensus model. If it sees a computer running out of sync with the network, it will replace it with a healthy candidate. Realistically, arbitrator is not really needed if everything is running as designed. The arbitrator does not have the power to sign transactions or directly interfere with the tick validation. Furthermore, the quorum has the power to replace the arbitrator by vote if it gets compromised. And therefore, the arbitrator does not present the point of centralization or a vector of attack. Now I find this part of cubic decentralization solution very elegant. If you have watched my introductory video to cubic, you will remember that miners do not directly contribute to validating the chain. In fact, if all mining was to stop, cubic chain would still run, validated by the computers. Here's how miners influence the composition of the quorum. All 676 quorum members must show uptime, current node software, and most importantly, they are responsible for contributing the mining hash rate to cubic. This creates constant competition between the computers as the weakest members get replaced with better workers. To stay in the game, some of the computers run their own mining farms but the majority have their own pools where anybody can join, provide their hash power for cubic, and participate in the portion of computer cubic coin rewards. Now let's remember that over 60% of Ethereum staking is concentrated in approximately 6 to 8 large pools, and around 5 to 10 large mining pools collectively control 60 to 70% of Bitcoin's total hash rate. Cubic is set up to have 676 pools, now let's talk about the economics of cubic chain. The top level stats are as follows. The total possible supply of cubic coins is 200 trillion units. At the time of this video, the current circulating supply is 114 trillion, with the total issued coins of 128 trillion. It is important to understand these numbers, because they show that approximately 14 trillion of cubic coins had been locked or staked. In a separate calculation, you can see that close to 16 trillion has been permanently burned already, even with the current low chain activity. I know, 200 trillion sounds like a large number, but the catch here is that cubic coins are not divisible. While 21 million Bitcoin can be divided into 1.2 quadrillion units of Satoshi, you start to see that the cubic coin supply is pretty conservative. The issuance of new coins into the market is always 1 trillion cubic per week as it's hard-coded into the protocol. For the first two years, this large number of coins was going to the computers to encourage adoption. However, there are burn mechanisms in place to balance the new issuance and coin burns. Most impactful burning mechanism is halving. This feature burns half of the issued weekly supply. The burn rate doubles every year, thus reducing the supply issued to the computers. As you can see from the chart, this annual reduction is very aggressive. Cubic's coin market supply is heavily dependent on how popular Cubic TickChain becomes for other projects to host their on-chain apps. One of the major coin supply reduction mechanisms lays with smart contracts. The proceeds made from the smart contract IPO purchases are burned to reduce Cubic coin market supply. Also, many smart contracts burn a percentage of the fees they earn. Cubic's emission model integrates event-driven burns supported by the Supply Watcher, a smart contract controlling burn rates in real time. The role of the Supply Watcher is to achieve the equilibrium of controlled scarcity for Cubic coin. It analyzes the impact of the inherent burning mechanisms in the system and decides how many coins need to be burned so that the tokenomics supports a healthy economy. All these tools will burn a significant number of coins annually and keep the economics attractive to miners far into the future. This high-level coverage of Cubic Tick Chain is detailed. I have sprinkled in some words about the security features of the protocol, but it is generally missing from this video. For that, I refer you to the official white paper linked below. 
there is a lot to learn there. Personally, I consider Cubic TickChain to be the most advanced and important piece of technology in the blockchain space today. I encourage you to watch my short introduction video to Cubic and research this technology further. I am just showing you a solid summary in my videos, but the rabbit hole goes much deeper. I welcome any questions in the YouTube comments or on X. I'll gladly answer. None of this is financial advice, but my own research and opinion. Thank you for your time. Please leave a like or a comment. It helps me continue making these videos. Till next time.